And this he was referring to the English Parliament, which is the only one he knew about. Quote, a parliament is nothing more than a big meeting of more or less idle people. Close quote. <laughs> idle people. So if this, what they, if this is what they wrote, and we have been told that uh, the West Minister is a mother of parliaments, and this is what they think there, then uh, we should not be worried about uh, the stories that we, we hear. Unfortunately, if a survey on the rightness or correctness of this quote was to be put to the, gen the Kenyan general public, I can guarantee that a majority of them would agree with this uh, statement. In fact, I can confirm that some, some members have faced the wrath of their constituents due to this general negative perception of parliament, which can be attributed to lack of awareness on the functions or the functioning of the institution of parliament. This inaugural event is therefore timely as it not only gives a well-needed impetus to the government's agenda of accountability of parliament and other auxiliary government organs, but also creates awareness on the functioning of parliament through its committees. We hope that by the end of the forum, we shall be able to have, in a small way, dispelled any further notions that a parliament is no more than a big meeting or more or less idle people. It's a tall order. But I was discussing earlier with the Honorable Speaker Kaparu and the Honorable Speaker Dugai that uh, I've not visited any part of the world where I have found the citizenry praising their parliaments. Indeed, my, my experience here in Kenya is a member of a parliament is elected and the next day, moment it is sworn in, the next day is, we hope this one is not going to be as the others. Speaker Caparo corrected and said, you know what, in the English language, I think there's nothing beyond the word worst. Because I sat in the eighth parliament. At that time, the description was, this is the worst. I came into the ninth, and almost three months down the road, this is the worst. Came the tenth parliament, which was the grand coalition, and same, same refrain. When we were in the 11th, most of you were there, Honorable Kaninike, Honorable Kisang, Honorable Chektumo, you will recall, every day, this is the worst, Honorable Kenta, you know this, Honorable Kaduri, hmm? this is the worst parliament. Now came the 12th, so I don't know. So Speaker Kaparo was right. I think if there was something they would describe beyond worst, that's what every house would be described. And therefore, that's not to say that uh, we should ignore what the public says. But we should, as Speaker Caparo said earlier, remain focused and execute our mandates as expected. And therefore, since we know that in a democracy, and Bruno speaking, as everybody knows, the roles of representation and lawmaking and uh, oversight in the executive branch of government, in performing those roles, we exercise delegated authority. I don't want to go because to go into the details because the Honorable John Bundy also dealt in that. So the reason why we must be at all times alive to the, the feelings and the concerns of the people we represent is because we too 
like the judiciary and the executive, exercise donated and or delegated authority. We try to do our best. But given the volume of legislative business that ordinarily would visit any parliament, it is inconceivable that bills could be examined in their details in the plenary without any input from committees. Indeed, the concept which Honorable Bandi took us through, which runs through our constitution about partic public participation, is best in the circumstances without any, any proper legal framework exercised through our committees, stakeholder engagements, professional bodies. And therefore, when committees present their reports, they help the plenary to shift through, shift through the various propositions contained in the bills or any other policy documents that may be presented to parliament from the executive or anywhere else. Parliamentary committees, as we know, again, are also anchored in our constitution. More specifically, this is the first time Indeed, I must appreciate the, the Constitution of Kenya 2010 that created a spe specific legal framework under Article 124 to say that Parliament shall enact its own rules and regulations to provide for committees. The current committees of the National Assembly are very vital structures through which the running of the business of the House is effected much more comprehensively and in a manner that is streamlined. To ensure their autonomy, authority, and impartiality, each of these committees have their own mandates, which outline their terms of reference, scope, responsibilities, composition, leadership, and work processes. It is clearly evident that these committees have allowed for greater space as far as public engagement is concerned, interactions from all quarters will be able to demystify parliamentary operations as well as get meaningful inputs from the citizens. These committees have also played a vital role in expanding the democratic space, further giving credence to the government's agenda to enhance public inclusion. To enhance the effectiveness of the operations of our committees, I propose the need to, to consider additional use of a set of core indic indicators that will define and measure our effectiveness. This effectiveness should be viewed from agreed perspectives or set goals, each with a balance of on financial and non-financial indicators, namely, financial performance, operational performance, external stakeholder satisfaction, and finally, a feel of the internal stakeholders, the membership level of satisfaction. If these proposals are adopted through a collaborative process of research, analysis, and negotiations among the various committees and parties then we, will, we can only hope that our parliament, and more specifically the National Assembly, will be a better beacon of what parliament does. I want to reassure you of my unwavering commitment in empowering and strengthening the institutionalization of the committee system. I want to assure you that I want to assure you of my commitment to implementing any of the decisions that will guarantee the implementation of various committee findings and recommendations. Indeed, I'm happy to note 
Oh, sorry, Honorable Amina Bella has left. But uh, through discussions, we now have a very active and robust committee on implementation, uh, which the Honorable Speaker Francis Caparo may not be aware of because it never existed during his time. Uh, but you'll be happy to note that it is uh, chaired by somebody from whom, uh, if you spoke length, this lingua, they will understand each other. But I'm happy because we do not have the executive in the house. And this committee was born out of the concern that committees can't become talking, cannot become talking shops. Recommendations must be implemented. We needed a mechanism through which decisions of the, of the House are responded to within time frames that are indicated. Furthermore, the National Assembly will enhance its commitment by ensuring continuous reforms to address any inherent weaknesses, as well as other policy and legislative challenges. Of course, one of the peculiarities of Kenya is that the term reform is associated only with passing of laws. In fact, the most important reforms are those need, needed without new, new laws, but in work practices and procedures. In this regard, I'm extremely delighted at the emphasis that these committees are made thus far, thus far through, thus far through stream, streamlining of uh, their processes. And the achievements are worth emulating in other government institutions. I wish to part by making us some statement, some observation that the need for public participation, the need for transparency and accountability runs through the Constitution. It talks about obligations placed on the state. But it, it appears like uh, to everybody's uh, mind, the state is only reflected in parliament. I want to throw this challenge to the judiciary, to the executive. I want to know how many of them have workplaces where the media is housed in their respective arms of government. We have the media with us here, and he that we want to know where it is, where it, where it is within the judiciary, they are housed or located to cover what happens in the judiciary. Not just the court cases, what other things are happening, because the media here covers everything that members do, including, but not limited to how they dress, who greets who, who smiles at who, who it is that uh, is fighting the other. <laughs> this is a gentleman, it was once said that people who score zero are not only those who do not participate in the game, but also those who play very well, but have no goals in focus. We have a focus. We do not want to be in that category. In conclusion, I can, con I can positively confirm that the 12th parliament shall not be scoring zero in the game, helping the country achieve the governance, or the governance as the committees have steadfastly maintained focus. I therefore want to take this opportunity to recognize the hard work and efforts that have been made by our committees. I look forward to, continue, to a continuance of the same, having a be, even better gains into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for, first of all, attending and accepting our invitation to come today and also listening to us. We are getting into the very exciting stage, but before we get there, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to, wel to welcome our chief guest. Our chief guest, I'm a brother, the Right Honorable Job Justino Dugai. Speaker of the National Assembly of the United Republic of Tanzania. Welcome.
Mheshimiwa Justin Bedan Njoka Muturi Speaker wa bunge la Jamhuri ya Kenya Mheshimiwa Moses Cheboi Naibu Speaker wa bunge la Jamhuri ya Kenya Mheshimiwa Speaker mstaafu mzee wetu Ole Kaparo na furahi kukuona ukiwa na afya njema na nakuletea salamu nyingi kutoka Tanzania kutoka kwa speaker mstaafu Msekwa na speaker mstaafu Ane Makinda Mheshimiwa John Badi kiongozi wa walio wachache bungeni Mheshimiwa Aden Duale kiongozi wa walio wengi ndani ya bunge Waheshimiwa wenye viti wa kamati za bunge mliopo Waheshimiwa maspika wa mabunge ya majimbo au counties naomba ni watambueni Mheshimiwa Michael Sialai katibu wa bunge la Kenya Waheshimiwa wa bunge wa staafu wa bunge wa zamani ambao nimefurahi sana kuwaona mkiwa na afya njema na Mungu aendelee kuwabariki Waheshimiwa wa bunge wote wa bunge la Kenya mliopo Waheshimiwa sana wageni waalikwa mabibi na mabwana Asalamu alaikum. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwanza naomba nikushukuru sana Mheshimiwa Speaker Muturi ndugu yangu kwa mwaliko wako na heshima kubwa ulionipa niweze kufika leo hapa na yesu.